Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a walkthrough on how to utilize Synology's Hyper Backup Program to back up the data on your Synology NAS device. Today's video will focus primarily on using a local share folder as your backup target, but there are tons of different services that are compatible with Hyper Backup, such as Amazon's AWS S3, or even utilizing like a Dropbox account as your backup target. I will probably do videos on some of these different specific uh, use cases in the future, uh, but just as a general guideline, today's video will focus on using a local shared folder as the backup target. So if you are planning on using one of these alternative services, keep an eye out for a future video, but you can follow along in today's video and get kind of some of the general uh, principles of how to utilize Hyper Backup. So without further delay, let's go ahead and jump right to it. The recommended method to do a local hyper backup is to have a secondary volume set up on your Synology device that is completely separate from the volume that you're actually going to be backing up data from. The reason for this is just to have an extra level of peace of mind uh, in case the worst case scenario happens and say you have one drive of data redundancy and two drives crash, crash at the same time, you still have a completely separate volume that has all your backup, backup data. After you've created a secondary volume, what you're gonna to need to do is go to your control panel, uh, go to your shared folder, and you'll see here that I've already created a new shared folder called backups, and the key point here is that it's on volume two. If you've never created a shared folder on a secondary volume, it's quite simple, just create the name, and then the key thing here is just to make sure you change the location to your new volume, of course. Uh, you can go ahead and disable the recycle bin because the hyper backup has an intelligent recycle bin that it deals with. All right, so going from there, we have our uh, secondary volume, or alternatively, if your Synology is full, uh, or if you have one of the smaller Synology devices that only has like one or two bays, you can use like a USB external hard drive or something along those lines, like a USB tape drive. Uh, there's not really a huge downside to this. I actually did it for three years and had no issues. That's not to say that you won't have an issue because USB hard drives aren't meant for like NAS use, but we're not really gonna be using those as a NAS drive. They're really only gonna be used like maybe once a day or like once a week, depending on how frequently you do backups. So it's not, it's not gonna be a drive that's constantly being used. It's only gonna be used periodically. That's why USB external hard drives are fine to use for that use case. After you've done all that and kind of figured out what you're planning on doing, where you're gonna be backing the, up the data to, you're gonna to go to your package center and click on backup and then click on hyper backup. I've already downloaded and installed hyper backup. So it just says open on my screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with that. Now here, you'll see there are tons of different options for hyper uh, backup destinations. The focus of this video is gonna be on local shared folder and external storage. A lot of the things that I'm gonna be doing will apply to all the other uh, tasks, but there will be some differences. So I probably will make uh, separate videos for some of the more popular uh, destinations uh, that are listed here. Um, but a quick thing I want to talk about with backups, uh, because you will see services like Dropbox uh, that are also on like the Cloud Sync application that uh, Synology also does have. The big thing here is cloud syncing is not a backup. You might think that since you have your data on your local Synology device and you have it on like said Dropbox, you might think the Dropbox is a backup. You're using your all the data off your Synology, that's your primary source. And you might think that since you're synchronizing every all the data, you have a backup on your Dropbox. But a just quick note that I wanted to make here is that the syncing is not a backup. Say something horrible happens, like a uh, crypto locker infects your network. Um, with a synchronization, all the files that are being encrypted are going to be synchronized and encrypted on your Dropbox folder too. With a backup, the backup is actually a copy of your data at a certain period of time. So say you had a weekly backup set up, and say it's Sunday, your backup's done and say you're infected on Tuesday with a crypto locker, you don't notice it until Wednesday morning when the message pops up saying all your files are encrypted, now give us Bitcoin. The thing with the synchronization, in the period of time between 
your uh, files being encrypted and you find out that they're encrypted, it had all the time to synchronize all those encrypted files to your Dropbox. With a backup, you still have at least a copy. It might be a little bit older, but at least you have a copy of your data that's a completely separate iteration before the encryption ever happened. So that's the big difference I wanted to point out real quick between just like synchronizing and actually creating a backup. So I'm gonna choose local shared folder and external storage for this uh, tutorial. Uh, that's like a great option if you, um, if you want to have complete control of your data because it's not being synchronized to Dropbox or anything along those lines. We've already talked about the fact that we want to create the shared folder called backups. Uh, real quick, I'm going to jump to here real quick and jump to backups. You'll see that it's complete, completely empty at this point in time. Uh, what the directory is going to be is the, what the subfolder inside of the backup share folder is going to be called that's going to host this data. So since I'm going to do this as a daily backup, I'm just gonna call this uh, directory daily backups. Uh, just makes sense. Uh, and this is all your destination. So this is where the backup data is gonna be stored at, not where you're actually copying the data from. We'll get to that here in one second. So create next. And now you're gonna create or choose the directories that you're actually gonna be backing up uh, from. So say I wanna back up everything inside of Interstellar, I'm just gonna choose that and click on it. Uh, alternatively, I can drill down and only choose certain subfolders so I can uncheck items and only choose to synchronize uh, certain subfolders and not have to synchronize all of the subfolders. Uh, alternatively, uh, if I do check back to the Dropbox, it still has a dash item there, meaning that it could potentially be something that isn't going to be synchronized. So if I want to make sure that I get everything inside of that main shared folder, I'll just unselect it and reselect it and you'll see a check mark again telling me that everything inside of that shared folder will be backed up. All right, so just click next. This screen, you also have the option to back up application data. So if you have an application setup that had a bunch of complicated configuration and you don't want to go through all that again in case something bad happens, you can back up your application data here. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose no. Uh, now you have a bunch of options here. Uh, the task, uh, let's move that over a little bit. See this faint line here? All your tasks will be listed here. Listed here. So make sure you na name that something that's actually gonna make sense to you. Uh, I'm only gonna have a single backup, so I'm just gonna call it, well, I'm only gonna have a single daily backup, so I'm gonna call it daily backup. Now say you had a daily backup to your local drive and you had a daily backup to like OneDrive or a uh, daily backup to Dropbox or something along those lines. Uh, you don't wanna call them both daily backups because you'll get confused. And I'm not even sure if it'll let you actually call them the same things, but just make sure it's something clear uh, so you know exactly what it is when you're trying to go through here and make any edits or anything to your backups. Your task and notification will just pop a notification in your notification uh, tray up here. Uh, in addition, if you have email notifications set up, it will email you too, uh, which is great so you can catch if so for some reason or not a backup failed. Uh, Synology backups have been very steady with Hyper Backup. I very, very, very seldom we have ever had issues. I might have had an issue once with a backup, um, but even then I can't re can't recall off the top of my head an issue that I've had uh, with a backup filling. But having a notification is nice just so you have that you know daily check. You don't have to log into your Synology. Most of the time I don't even log into my Synology for weeks at a time just because it does things automatically so well, downloads, updates, and everything along those lines so well. Uh, your compressed data, backup data, you can compress it if you want to. I have plenty of space on my uh, pack a volume, so I'm just going to not do that. You can also enable client-side encryption. Uh, this is good, especially if you're like synchronizing to like Dropbox or something, and you just want to have a little bit more security on the data that's being backed up, since it's not on a server that you control anymore. You can encrypt that and include uh, put a password there. The backup schedule. This is the most important part, probably, uh, in my opinion, to all the configuration set. This is how often your backup's going to run. You have a couple different options here, and I'm gonna to get to something here in a little while that's kind of annoying about this is you don't have all the options. So I'll get to that in a little bit though. It's really annoying how they have this set up. Uh, but for right now, you do have some options here. So you have some presets here, uh, which is like daily, weekend, and weekday. So weekdays is gonna be Monday through Friday, weekend, or daily. I'm gonna be doing a daily backup since because I, I never know when I'm gonna be doing content. It might be a Sunday, it might be a Monday, it might be a Tuesday. I never really know, so I'm just gonna be doing a daily backup. But if you're at like setting this up at a work, you can easily easy set this up on weekdays. And because if you're not there on Saturday to Sunday, why do you need to do backups? 
Um, and next thing is going to be your first run time. I'm just going to go ahead and set this to midnight. So every day at midnight, it'll start the backup process. You have integrity checks, which essentially just checks to make sure that the data that is backed up uh, doesn't have any errors um, so that you, when you need to back up a file, you don't encounter any errors. Uh, this won't happen at the same level of uh, you know speed that your backups will happen. Um, like in fact, the shortest duration is going to be weekly. You can do it monthly, yearly, or half yearly, which is every six months. Um, I'm just going to leave mine at the uh, like. Let's do it every Sunday. Uh, uh, let's do it at three o'clock, so it gets done a little bit earlier before I wake up. So if I want to do something earlier morning, I can. So every Sunday at three o'clock, it'll run uh, on a weekly basis. And you can also include a time limit there, like you can increase it to 60 minutes if you want to give it a little bit extra time, which might be valid if you have a, a ton of data that you're backing up. So that'd be something you might have to play uh, by ear. Going from there, you have backup rotation. Uh, without this checked, it's only going to keep the latest iteration of your data. So if you edit a file, uh, it won't have two days ago files. It's only going to have you know the latest version of that file. You can enable backups and you have the smart recycle, which if you don't know anything or need help, there's these little eyes all over the place which has some more information. So this will automatically uh, get rid of old data based on how often your backups are being created. Or you can use like from the earliest versions uh, and you can keep so many iterations. So this would be 256 versions, uh, which would get you nine months of daily backups, which is a crazy amount. Or you could do 30 which is gonna get you a little over four weeks, you know, four weeks and two days uh, of backups. And you get a ton of different options there. And it's not gonna back up the entire shared folder. It's only gonna keep the different changes between those different backups. So if you're backing up 150 uh, gigabytes of data, but you're only changing probably, you know, 50 megabytes on daily on average, you're not going to have 150 gigabytes times 30. You're going to have like 150 gigabytes plus a couple different changes from between those different periods of time, whatever those actually account to. I'm not going to enable any backup. I just wanted to keep the uh, the latest copy on my daily backups because I'm actually going to set up a different uh, operation for weekly and monthly, uh, which I'll get to monthly here in a little bit. Uh, after you have finished it, you can, can create a backup right off the bat. I'm just going to hit no though. And now we get to the interesting part. After you've created it, you can back up now. Uh, you can go to your backup explorer uh, and look at different versions. I haven't done any backups, so there's nothing there to look at right now. Um, but the biggest thing here is I want to do uh, edit. And you can manually ch uh, do a check on your backup integrity uh, if you want. If you don't want to set that up automatically and just do it manually periodically. The biggest thing about Synology though is so much of the things are automated. That if you just let it do it automated, you don't really ever have to log into your uh, device all that often. So say you added a new shared folder and want to add it, you can go to edit and re-add folders in the future. Uh, that's a great option. Application, you can re-add applications or uncheck uh, applications that you did synchronize and you don't want to synchronize for some reason or, or another in the future. Uh, in the settings, there's not a lot you can change here, but you can change the task name and things like that. The biggest thing here is the schedule. So for some reason in all of their infinite wisdom, they did not include all these uh, setting changes in the setup tab. So to do some more complex um, and more complicated setup procedures, you actually have to come here and do it here. So you can do like a no schedule, which essentially means it's a manual backup. It only happened when you click the run button uh, over here, when you click, you have the option of backup now. Uh, that means it only be ran when you click that button. Uh, here you have the same options we saw earlier. But here, if you click on this, you can actually do longer term backups. You can actually do a monthly, a yearly, or a half yearly backup. You didn't have these options previously when you're doing the schedule. You did have like half yearly on your uh, rotations and things like that. Uh, or sorry, not, not on rotations. You had half yearly on your frequency here. But you did not have these options to like do a backup half yearly or a yearly. The biggest thing that I do is a monthly backup. Uh, and that's pretty useful to have a monthly backup just to have an older version of your data uh, That's easy to go back to you can do that with like a rotation. Uh, I just like keeping uh, My backup small and I like managing them a little bit deeper So I do like a daily backup a weekly backup and a monthly backup and that leaves me with a lot of control and Not necessarily having the Synology have it on like a, a backup rotation and they're completely separate backup uh, tasks too 
So here I can actually choose like the first, uh, which I'll choose December 1st since November 1st has already been passed. Uh, I'll choose November, December 1st uh, as a backup and I'm gonna repeat it monthly. So that means on the first of every month, this backup is actually gonna happen. I don't know why there is not this setting on the, when you're first setting it up, it's kind of annoying. But if you do wanna do like a monthly backup, that's how you would do it. And also another cool thing here is you can do like a daily backup but if you want to do like a more frequent than daily backup, say you want to do your your week uh, day backup because you're there Monday through Friday, but you also want to have that daily backup actually happen multiple times throughout the day. So say you get there at eight o'clock uh, and uh, you want to do uh, every hour and uh, you leave at uh, 1800 hours of like 4 p.m. So you get there at eight o'clock and you leave at 4 p.m. You can actually have this uh, your backup uh, run on every weekday. It'll run every hour f between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. So that's another cool feature that they don't have on the original setup screen. I guess the reason they didn't include all these extra features is just to keep things as simple as possible. But if you do to go to edit, you have a lot more control over all the different settings that you have. So I want to go ahead and revolt these back to. Uh, my normal settings that I already had and I'm just going to set my runtime back to midnight and I'm going to only going to run it once a day so I have it back to how I want it also I could hit cancel uh, and like once again if you do do the manual if you do the no schedule you would hit the backup now and that backup would only happen when you actually told it uh, to backup by go logging into your Synology and going to the hybrid backup and clicking on that task and clicking backup now so that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I think I covered Hyper Backup pretty thoroughly. But if I did miss something or if you had any further questions, don't hesitate to ask those in the comments below. If you found this video helpful or otherwise enjoyable, leave it a big like. I greatly appreciate that. And if you're not already an existing subscriber, smash that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great videos from Thought Provoking Tech. Until next time, Zach out.